What's going on, bros? So, master setting versus grading in the year 2024. You may have seen a lot of YouTube videos lately about just that topic in general, about grading versus master setting. So, I'm someone who literally a year ago started my YouTube channel just literally my first YouTube video ever is I'll show it right here is literally how to break a Pokemon card out of a PSA graded slab over the next couple months my next several YouTube videos were just occasional PSA return videos so I literally started a YouTube channel on PSA grading okay but here we are only one year later and now my brain has been reworked so much to the extent that I now absolutely prioritize master setting and completing master sets, especially with Scarlet and Violet, because it is way more feasible than the Sword and Shield era. So, in just a minute, I'm going to crack out Crown Zenith's most valuable chase card and put it into my Crown Zenith master set. So first of all, I think there is a place in the hobby for both, obviously, graded collectibles and master setting any Pokemon set that comes out, or master setting any variation of collection of Pokemon cards you so desire. Like, if you like Kyogres, just make a whole binder full of Kyogres. I guarantee you there's a hundred other people that already have. So, anyway, just because the a collectible in a grading authentication process okay that is always going to be a thing it's not like psa graded pokemon cards aren't going to be worth anything um they're just going through a lull they went through a huge surge now we're going through a little bit of a recession okay um and this recession kind of opens other people's eyes into other ways of going about collecting or utilizing pokemon cards and in my case it is i'm finding a lot of fun a lot of value um and just i'm just having a lot of fun master setting okay so i'm not hating on on grading i still grade and i have a whole bunch of pokemon cards waiting to be graded that have nothing to do with master setting that are completely separate on the side just a whole different thing going on okay so that's that's for me personally so what you see here is there's the tina and there's two cloud final fantasy cards the tina is in a black uh psa protector one of those two clouds is going to go in that protector i just set them aside because i can't choose which one yet but yeah so there's the tina it's going to go into that crown zenith binder now let's take a look at what's in my crown zenith binder first of all i need 30 reverse hollows there are specifically 30 reverse hollows that i need for crown zenith to be 100 percent complete i probably pulled these I know almost all of these I probably pulled and then gave away um, back when Crown Zenith came out before I decided to master set. But all right, let's get into this binder. So, first of all, the first few pages start off right off the bat with the reverse hollows. Uh, I don't mess around with the bulk. If you want, you can slide the bulk cards behind the reverse hollows, but um, they just add weight to the binder. But yeah, so I start off right off the bat with all the reverse hollow master set. You'll see the 30 spots that I'm missing still, 30 reverse hollows throughout here. But yeah, we're just in speed through mode for the first few pages. There's the requisas. All right, so we're getting to the end here. All right, there's your trainer card. So we have a list of sparkles up in the corner. And then we have the texture energies after that. All those reverse hollow texture energies, I put those right there. Then at the bottom there, you see the, uh, the the birds, the legendary bird promos. You see the secret rare Pikachu, and then you see the Crown Zenith box collection. Pikachu is up at the top, and then there was more of uh, the Lucario ETB promo. And now the glaring gallery starts. All right, so here's where things get crazy beautiful, is we go through that Galarian gallery. I think there's 34 of them. I put an extra Mew and an extra Lapras just in the bottom corner so the silver borders uh, begin on the next page. And then this this 18 cards right here, this two page, this two page spread to me is about as beautiful as it gets. This 
is insane to me like this this 18 cards like this is why you would choose to master set over getting your cards graded and just keeping a bunch of graded cards in a suitcase or a box or whatever it's pages like that that make me want to master set all right there's the tina tina obviously is gonna go right there all right and that's what we're gonna do here in a minute now I forgot, there we go. So there's actually more. So first of all, here's all the rares that were from the main set that in place, I had the reverse hollows there, but now I have the rares. So here's your section of rares and then all those signature trainer rares, those are all there too. And then the non-texture, those are the lame reverse hollow energy cards are there. So there's all the cards and then this is all extra. So the last few pages, and the reason I don't put the bulk is so I have some a couple pages extra for a bunch of extra hits that I just really don't feel like selling yet. So yeah, tons of extra trainer trainer gallery Galarian gallery uh, extras there. All right, all right. Now we get into the fun part. So now is where we break Tina out, throw Tina in my binder. So first of all, when I, when doing this, I always do the upper right hand corner method. Uh, every time I've ever done this, watch my first YouTube video ever if you want to see a very good example of how to break uh, slabs out this way. I don't know if I got a little confident, but uh, maybe because I'm standing up and I'm holding the card in front of me, in front of the camera, in front of a camera holder. But what you want to do is you want to cut the upper right hand corner, but you probably want to have it laying flat on a table to brace a little better and you want to make the cut uh, a lot wider than I did because I cut only off the top and you really want to aim for that kind of bottom right corner of the label um, that way you can get a flathead screwdriver in there a lot easier than I did on my first attempt so yeah I break a lot of slabs naturally because I was recording this one I struggled a little bit but yeah so make a bigger cut so you can get the flat head in either either the top or the bottom of the slab will kind of jut out a little making it so you can shove the flat head in there once you get it there you go so again you want to aim not for the upper right hand corner of the label like i did but the bottom left hand corner of the label uh, because when i did this part it got a little sketchy i'm not gonna lie you want the whole right side of the slab to crack when you do your first lift of the uh, the flathead. And had, if I was holding it on the table, bracing the table, this might have went a lot smoother. <laughs> but instead, this is the first time I ever had this happen where the slab only kind of broke on the top rather than clean across the right side. But yeah, so use a table, you know, use the table as leverage with your flathead. And then make sure you go kind of at the bottom right hand corner of the PSA label so you get a nice clean break across the bottom not just the top uh, so yeah that's why I struggled on this particular slab break yikes yeah I'm not gonna lie I was pretty nervous especially right here because it's now at the border but if I let go it would have snapped it right on the card so I got lucky on this one but yeah so Tina Tina is now free now we're gonna be extra careful so this Giratina it got a mint 9 I mean, obviously, if this was a Gem Mint 10, I might not be making this video. I might just leave it in the case. Um, but, I mean, this Tina should have gotten a 10. It was pretty, it was pretty solid. It was pretty, maybe, I mean, it was pretty well centered. And, yeah, I don't know. Point is, it's going into the binder. Beautiful Tina. There she is. Let's go ahead and watch me slide it on in there. Yeah, so master setting in the year 2024, I think is gonna be more and more popular, especially as there's less incentive to grade and flip, because overall slabs are just down. Not down hard, they're just down off their peaks. So, you know, when you're at a peak, there's nowhere to go but down. Uh, but I think it's good for the hobby to have more and more people actually collecting all the cards, not just going for chase cards and flipping and, you know, rushing to sell for the lowest price. Um, but yeah. And so there you go. There's my Crown Zenith Master Set. And again, all I need is those 30 reverse hollows. But yeah, so I'm doing this master setting for basically every single Scarlet and Violet set that comes out. I also have a ton of cards that I'm always looking for that I target for grading. 
So just because we're doing master setting doesn't mean we're not grading. I'm just prioritizing master setting a lot more and I'm finding a lot more fulfillment. I don't know. I just, I, I'm, I'm having way more fun master setting. So PSA grading, I graded like four, somewhere between four and 500 cards last year, which went fine. I sold most of them. It was great for my eBay store and all that. And, and that was good. And I still like grading, but definitely having more fun master setting. I'm getting most all my cards locally, which adds to the challenge and makes it take a little longer. Um, plus it makes it to where I, I uh, support my local game stores, which is always a plus, good for the, the local gaming community. But yeah, so that's all I got for you guys. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys get some nice Paldea, Paldean Fates hits here coming up since it is Paldean Fates time of the year. All right, deuces.